Welcome to the Great Loop Radio Podcast, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. I'm Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. Today, we are going to uh, talk about fitness on the loop, which is such an important topic, and I think a lot of people underestimate how much being fit can actually help you while you're looping. So we're going to talk today with Doreen Sharp. She is one of our gold loopers, and she is also an expert in this area and you know, kind of had to figure out on her own while she was looping how to keep up her fitness level that she enjoyed before she started the loop. So we'll bring Doreen in in just a second. First, as always, I want to take a moment to recognize and thank our Admiral sponsors who support AGLCA at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes & Associates, Great Loop Yacht Sales, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. And with the business completed, I'd like to officially welcome Doreen Sharp to Great Loop Radio. Thanks for joining me, Doreen. Thank you very much, Kim. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, and I appreciate that you reached out when you finished your loop and said that you'd love to talk about this topic because this ha obviously has been a passion of yours before and during the loop. And uh, now it's oh. something that you really want to help other loopers with. Um, so just to start us off, tell us a little bit about yourself and your own great loop adventure. All right. Well, I'm a physiotherapist. I've been one for over 40 years and I've never worked a day in my life. It's just the most amazing job. Mm -hmm. Um uh, so when I, um, Steve and I decided in 1989 to buy a monk trawler and to um, purchase, um, to do the Great Loop. And we kept it up in Georgian Bay and did a lot of upgrades to make it safer, more comfortable in Urganaga to get ready for the loop. Of course, the pandemic delayed our trip. So we started our loop in Hastings, Ontario on August the 20th, 22, and completed it on June 11th, 23. And what an amazing experience it was. Yeah, absolutely. And and most people find it to be an amazing experience. Um, before your loop, though, you were very active in group fitness, solo fitness. Um, you know, I've kind of found that I think it's the people who are in the best shape before the loop struggle the most to maintain that during the loop. Um, I know I myself struggled with that a little bit. So uh, and I've spoken to many loopers who are very fit and very active and have approached me with questions about, you know, how do you maintain that level of activity and fitness on a boat? And I, I think you had some of those same concerns, Doreen, before you were started. So how did you approach the idea of the loop and trying to figure oh. out how to match the lifestyle that was so important to you? Yes. Well, when Steve started talking about the Great Loop, I was very reluctant, actually. I had an exercise program that I did. We walked for eight kilometers four times a week. I swam 20 lengths twice a week. I did boot camp three times a week and yoga. And I'm a land lover. I love to hike, ski, cross-country ski, and do half marathons, actually. But Steve promised me, if we did it, that we'd get to land as often as possible. We'd walk and we'd bike or in a swim, find a beach or find a gym. So that's how we started the loop with that promise. And that's a hard, it's a, it's a great promise, but it is also a hard thing to keep up. <laughs> yep, um, yep. But let's, uh, besides having a passion for this and obviously being extremely active on your own before the loop, you're also a physiotherapist. Um, so you certainly have lots of expertise. Um, one of the things you're advocating for is focusing on strength and muscle mass, not only on the loop, but as we age in general. Explain why that is so important. Oh, Kim, it's so important. As a physiotherapist, I tend to nag people all the time. And the most important thing is that is we need to be keeping on doing our exercises. And it's hard to do an exercise program. Um, the, what, what's important is that we age. We develop something called sarcopenia, which is an interesting, cool name. But it basically means natural aging process of muscle loss due to aging. And it can actually start when we're 30 to 40 years old. But it picks up between 60 to 80 years old. And then each, each decade after that, we can lose as much as 8% of our muscle if we don't keep using those muscles. Besides that, old age, inactivity, lack of exercise, and poor nutrition can increase those chances of get, risk of getting sarcopenia. But if we do not do our exercise, strengthening exercises, we will gradually get weaker. This can affect, affect, our, affect our function, our balance, and possible falls. So the statistics say that if we do the great exercises, we can maintain our strength and, and decrease sarcopenia. 
Great Loops itself is not is a very active lifestyle, but it's just not enough. Not enough vascular. There's cardiovascular, but we need more cardiovascular. We need more strength, flexibility, and balance. They're all missing when we're doing the Great Loop. Many people walk, bike, and run for aerobic conditioning, but they don't incorporate enough strengthening exercises in their program. Yeah, and I think the strengthening is probably one of the things that's a little bit more challenging than other things. Um, sure. the loop. And you're right, it is an active lifestyle. And it took me a while to figure out, you know, there were others who started the loop the same time as us, and we would be at docktails with them. And um, many of them would talk about how they'd lost some weight since they started the Great Loop because, and, and I have since really kind of boiled that down to, I think people who are not active before they start probably are the ones who actually do lose some weight when they start the Great Loop because it is an active lifestyle. But those who, like you, are um, very dedicated to fitness and uh, religious gym goers and um, exercise enthusiasts tend to struggle with it a little bit more. And as I said, the um, the strengthening part is really part of one of the things that's hard on the boat. Um, so with the challenges of staying fit on the loop, um, I mean, it's easier if you actually started your fitness efforts before the loop to, um, you know, get in the shape you want to be. And it can make looping easier. So talk about that and tell us why that's important. Sure. It is very important that you're in the best shape before you start the loop. Most people purchase their boat, and get it ready to get ready for the loop. But you need to keep your body, get it ready for the loop, too. Doing the loop is very demanding, requiring strength, endurance, balance, and flexibility. You will find yourself pulling ropes, tying cleats, lassoing ropes, running to get into position, climbing sometimes four feet up or four feet down according to the tide levels. The aim is to be as functionally fit as you can possibly be before you do the loop, and then it'll be a lot easier to maintain it. Even if you do lose some of that strengthening, if you're not because of the the loop, at least we won't fall and injure ourselves, which I saw a lot of times during the trip. You know, uh, you mentioned that you saw a lot of people fall. Um, and I feel like that is something that's a little bit on the rise. Um, I haven't figured out if uh, because I'm on the boat and a little bit more out there than I was a few years ago when I was sitting at my desk, maybe I'm just hearing about it more. Um, but I have heard of, you know, a handful of, of uh, falling accidents. Um, thankfully, nothing too serious, but it can result in injuries. So, you know, in light of the need to stay fit, to keep that muscle strength, um, you know, balance is another thing. But let's start with kind of the equipment that you can bring aboard to help with the strength and the muscle mass, because that is one of the more challenging things, I think, on a boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I brought um, on, the, on the boat a quarter inch mat, TheraBand loops and bands a small ball, a kettlebell, 10 pound, noodles and weights for swimming. As well, we had our e-bikes with our helmets and lights in a basket. And I brought my paddle board to be used mostly when I could get into the water. Mm -hmm. I also recommend having a fit like a Garmin to measure your, your um, steps and your laps when you're in the pool and your heart rate. I also recommend wearing good shoes when you're doing your exercises for stability and balance and good supportive shoes when you're running or, or riding or bike running. So the strength building is important. Like I said, those aren't the things that if you're not focused on this beforehand, they're probably not the things that you're thinking about bringing on the boat. So that's some good examples of some smaller equipment that can help with this. I have a set of weights that um, was specific to a uh, class at the gym I liked, but the weights themselves have proven to be super handy. Um, they're less mills weights. I don't, know, I don't know if you're familiar with any of the less mills fitness, but the weights are um, 10 pounds, five pounds, and two and a half pounds, two of each, but they serve, they have a handle in the middle that can be hand weights. They're about the size of a plate, so you can use them as plates. And if you hold them by the end, they actually can serve like kettlebells. So they've been super helpful um, to use for a variety of different exercises. Cardio is a little bit easier because you can do some of that outdoors. So talk to us a little bit about how you found time and places for your cardio while you were on the loop. Yes, of course, the space is an issue on any boat, but you can always find a good seven foot space somewhere. The tricky part is trying to set up to get a schedule to be able to do your exercises every day if you can. So you have to think, you think you're going to have lots of time to do your exercises, but you're when you're traveling, you're busy doing charting, planning um, routes, booking marinas, researching, following your friends on Nebo and sharing ideas with a few of them. So it's important that you break your times up into separate 
time. So you can do the standing exercises at one time, lie down once at another time. I try to do them every day, some functional exercises, but you don't have to spend 30 minutes doing them. Just break it up through different times. Mm -hmm. That's good yeah. advice because sometimes carving out 30 minutes is is hard. And people who haven't oh, yeah. started the loop yet often think, you know, they'll have plenty of time. Yeah, it is absolutely. a much busier lifestyle than most people realize until they've actually gotten started. So it's a great suggestion to just kind of do little pieces at a time. And I have been able to incorporate that occasionally um, where my normal space is kind of in the salon. Um, but there have been times where we were underway and I was up on the flybridge, not the one driving, um, but just up there to help with navigating or looking at things. And I was able to get in parts of, you know, parts of my normal exercise while up there and do the rest later. So you really have to get a little bit creative sometimes about what can work. Um, do. It is possible to get it in. Let's take a quick break and play a message from one of our sponsors. When we come back, uh, the first thing I want to touch on when we come back is some of your favorite places that you found along the loop for some of that cardio we talked about, like hiking and biking, because there's lots of great places to do those kinds of activities. So we'll pick up there when we come back. Need strong, reliable cell signal on your next water excursion? Powerful Signal is your one-stop shop for the most powerful cell signal boosters on the market. A cell signal booster is essential while boating, especially in remote or offshore areas where maintaining a reliable cellular connection is crucial for safety, communication, and convenience. With 17 years experience and excellent customer service, Powerful Signal is confident we can help you find the perfect cellular booster kit for your unique situation. We believe in powerful products and powerful connections. Let us help strengthen your signal. Visit PowerfulSignal.com or call 435-634-6800 to speak with an expert today. Discover relaxation and pleasure at Saybrook Point Resort and Marina, conveniently situated at the mouth of the Connecticut River on Long Island Sound, just a quick trip off the loop. Only 90 miles from New York City, our marina offers world-class amenities and impeccable service for vessels of any size. Enjoy friendly concierge service, waterfront dining, a hotel, spa, and health club, along with on-site laundry, thick areas, complimentary shuttle and bicycles, and a courtesy car. Saybrook Point Resort and Marina is your destination for provisioning, relaxation, exploration, repairs, and beyond. We're back on the Great Loop Radio podcast. My guest today is Gold Looper Doreen Sharp. She is a fitness enthusiast. She is also a physiotherapist, and she is kind of filling us in on both the importance of having a high level of fitness for the Great Loop, but also how to maintain that while you're looping, because it certainly is a different lifestyle. Um, so one of the things, Doreen, that we've kind of talked about is a little bit easier maybe than some of the other parts and more enjoyable while you're exploring new places is some opportunities to take walks or bike or hike. So tell us about some of your favorite places you found along the loop to get in some some biking or hiking. Yeah, I, I looked for marinas along the way that had bike trails or hiking trails and even pools. And just a warning, some pools are closed January, D December and February. So you're thinking you're book booking a place to the pool and you get there and it's closed. <laughs> Um, or places that have gyms or boot camps and yoga classes as well. But beaches can offer us a lot of things too. And many walls along the way that you stop are close to towns and have lots of activities available. When we anchored, we were amazing that we could just stop, take off our dinghy and then go to land and find a trail along the way as well. I used the All Trails app to help find hiking trails. And that was a great um help to do so if you if you're a place you landed you could just look up and find out what loops what tom trails were around there mm -hmm. some of my favorite places were in florida there is we just loved every every time you stopped just getting on the bike and biking to the beach and particularly love to see sunrises and sunsets mm -hmm. um couldn't believe in new york city that it's actually a really bike friendly city we actually took our bikes and spent a couple of days just biking all the way through they have a dedicated path all the way through New York City and through Central Parks, which was really fun. Jekyll Island was one of my real favorite places because it has a dedicated bike trail all around it. We actually just came back from there. We took our land yacht down there last week to go back again to enjoy those trails and took our grandkids there for biking. Another nice place was Tarpon Springs that had a beautiful dedicated bike trail. I kind of find dedicated bike trails whenever I could because it's a lot safer when you're worrying about cars driving beside you. Mm -hmm. um, they had a bike trail that went right to Dunedin. And um, also in um, Green Turtle Bay, 
They had lots of hiking and biking around there, but they also had a great indoor pool and a gym and um, equipment and a spa. Yes. Perry. <laughs> yeah. They did. That, that was, was a great awesome. stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Perry Hotel in, in Key West has a great gym and a beautiful pool, and they have boot camp classes too. So I joined into some of the boot camp classes when I was there. So I was so excited to finally be able to do some boot camp. Um, Bradenton um, Twin Dolphins has a great length pool for doing some exercises and Oriental, their pool was closed, but just up the street, there was a physiotherapy clinic with an indoor pool. So she, I was able to use the pool there for some lengths too. Mm -hmm. So, but biking, biking trails are just available so many places. You just have to, and a lot of them were dedicated. So it was really nice to be able to do that um, when you could. Yeah. A couple of places I found some great biking trails. Um, uh, Milwaukee, and I don't know if you went down the Wisconsin side of Lake Michigan, but Milwaukee has an extensive network of bike trails through a waterfront park. Um, and we found that you could kind of um, get to where you wanted to be in the city, you know, kind of head north and south along the bike trail along the water. And then when you were at the street you wanted to turn in at, it was less city biking um, to get to your destination. So that was a great one. And Florida, you know, in general, I've heard you can actually bike from, you know, somewhere around Fort Myers all the way up towards Tampa and then across the state onto the, the East Coast. So <laughs> lots of biking in Florida and lots of great walking trails as well. Um, yeah. We just spent a couple months in Punta Gorda and there's a waterfront trail that runs about three miles along uh, the harbor there and then kind of takes a turn into town. So um, there's lots of opportunities if you look for them and uh, walking is really one of them that I think is easiest and most popular. So um, and I think, I think you also did this, Doreen, I think you had mentioned um, in um, Killarney, uh, there was a very nice hike up to a lighthouse, a little bit more right. challenging maybe than a typical walk um, that you might be taking on the loop. It was a nice hike. And, and then, of course, in Georgian Bay, there's lots of opportunities for hiking. If you're anchoring out, you can dinghy ashore and um, lots of mm -hmm. hikes there, too. So you will find it. You just have to look for it, I think. Um mm -hmm. But you also found some creative ways to find that time. And you talked about kind of breaking the work up out. So, you know, do a set of, of exercises at one time and a set later. But you also found some creative ways to get some of that in while you were locking through. So tell us about how you lock and get some exercise in at the same time. Well, as you'll know, in the Trent Severn Waterway in, in Ontario, you have 44 locks that you have to go through. And they sometimes take quite a bit of time. So what I was going through... I would do my squats. I would do my one leg stance. I would do some leg lifts. I'm sure the attendants thought it was really weird when I was doing them. <laughs> I would do push off of the railings frequently through the day, shoulder rolls and um, IT band stretches. And all, And I would just do even marching on the spot. But really important is just to kind of engage your core all the way through when you're doing that. So you're using your abdominal time whenever you can. And even getting a stress ball is, and squeezing that to help with your grip strength anytime while you're standing there going through the locks. And um, helps to with some um, helps with our anxiety and stress as well because sometimes going through those locks can be a little bit stressful. <laughs> right. So, any other suggestions for you know some exercises, uh, whether it's body weight only um, or floor exercises that you can do on board? So you know, basically in a very small confined space. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a kind of a program that I did that I I do when even at home, which is um because I don't think we need to do a lot of weights. Weights are great, but our our body weight strength is really helpful as well. Mm -hmm. Um, exercises such as doing bridging on your back, um, dead bugs, and then on your front front and side planks, push ups off your knees or off the railing, the QL stretch, which is a really important stretch to do for our back, side laying leg leg lifts are really important for leg strength using a theraband. Another one of my favorite exercises for hip strength, because we need to focus on our hips, is the bird dog and the fire hydrant. Then in standing, I, I do a lot of TheraBand ex strengthening exercises for the arms and legs. And squats, of course, we can do whenever. And lunge and toe raises. Those are kind of my favorite ones that I did through the day. So they're easy to do and fun. But And then when I got to the beach, I would take my blanket out there and just do my exercises on the beach, too. So oh. just another thing about when you go to that beach. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, those are all uh, exercises that people can do on their own. And if you're not familiar with them, you can find them by Googling. Um, in addition to staying active, though, nutrition plays a huge part. Um, that is another thing that's tough on the loop because a lot of us like to try the new restaurants and enjoy ducktails with others. Um, 
so it can be really hard to keep your nutrition on track on the great loop so any tips that you have for how to deal with that change in your lifestyle yeah well that's an, another good reason why you should do exercises that is because you do meet so many people when you're on the loop and you have your best plan of cooking a great nutritious meal on the boat and not having any drinks today haha -ha. But you end up having cocktails with these amazing people you meet, and then you end up getting talked into going to dinner <laughs> with these great friends that you meet. And then it doesn't help when you see Kim's lifestyle videos that tell you all the great places to get the best ice cream and the I best know. butter. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> I do recommend the Mediterranean diet as much as possible, predominantly um, focusing on vegetables and fruit. And of course, we need our protein when we're doing our exercises. Limit the bread and limit the French fries. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, those are hard things to do. But, um, you know, there's so many different things to try that limiting those few things can make such a difference. So um, tell us, so you obviously were very fit when you started the loop. Um, this is something that's hard to measure. But, you know, how was that high fitness level helpful for you as you started and went through the entire Great Loop? Yeah, well, that the big thing was that every day we'd, we'd usually be able to jump off and go for a great long walk or a bike. And because we were fit already, we could really go and explore more because that's the best part of doing these loop trips is also is when you're bike, walking and biking, you're exploring each one of these beautiful places that you land at. But posture is really important um, because you find yourself sitting for a long time. So it, it's really important to correct that. And that's what, again, if you're strong before, it's easier to maintain good posture. And the waves and the wakes that can hit you can really challenge your balance and can cause falls. So having one hand on the ship all the time and watching your posture is really important. Um, having a good, strong core and good balance is really important because we are being challenged all the time when we're on that boat. So just as we look to wrap it up, um, you know, we've talked several times about you being um, very fit before you started the loop. And how hard it is to um, keep up on track with nutrition and to keep on track with um, balance and uh, muscle strength and things like that. How do you think your fitness was when you came back from the loop? Was it still at that high level you left or was that impossible to maintain? Well, I really did hope and I had such good plans that I was going to be in great shape the whole time. We did come home four times during our loop. And at that, when I was home for a week, I would go back to my boot camp for a week or two and go, oh boy, I've got to get keep going here. And then I had the, a fall on, in April when I was on the boat, when I was running to catch the rope and landed on my shoulder. And that kind of slowed me down for a little while. But I have to admit, that getting on the deck and doing those exercises did not happen as often as I had planned. I did lots of aerobic exercises, lots of biking, probably 20,000 20, steps every day. But I noticed when we completed our trip, trip and came back to our home dirt, I was especially weak in my triceps, my hand grip, and my weeks, my hips, I mean, and I actually put on five pounds, which I was surprised at. Yeah. I re realized that there's a lot of activities that change when you're on the boat. At home, you're going to boot camp, you're, you're shoveling snow, you're working in the garden, you're doing all those different things. But on the boat, it's really hard to really focus. So that's why I really want to do this podcast to just kind of um, encourage people to do your exercise, be strong before you do the loop and try to do them as much as possible when you're on the boat. In fact, one day uh, we live right in the trans Severn Waterway and I saw a looper going by and a fellow was out in the front of the boat doing um, kettlebells. So I thought, hey, somebody's doing them. That's great. <laughs> Yep. Good for him. It is, it is a, a challenge for sure. And um, yeah, <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> I certainly put on some weight that I'm still working to get back off, but that said, you know, I, I feel like for the most part, I did the best I could. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's all, you know, anybody's encouraging to do, but it does yep. get easier if you're more fit. So Doreen, I that's really uh, thank you for reaching out and, and suggesting that we cover this topic in this way. Uh, I appreciate you sharing all that knowledge. And I think you've probably inspired some that it can be done. Uh, sure. And hopefully, and uh, honestly, if, uh, if you want to give my email or, or, or so contact, if anybody wants to contact me about proper exercises, exercises to do, I'm happy to do that. And I actually have a website with exercises on it too. So okay, go ahead and tell us what that website is. Yeah, it's www.sharptherapy.com. Sharptherapy.com. Got yep. it. Uh, Doreen, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we appreciate it. And um, we hope to have you back to do a follow-up on this. It's been a great topic. Okay, good luck, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> and thanks to everyone who's watched or listened today. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Great Loop Radio Podcast. Until then, safe cruising. Mm -hmm.